How are you guys doing? Is everyone doing good? All right, glad to hear. Well, um, let's talk about space. <laughs> this is my title slide. So, uh, paraphrasing the late, great Carl Sagan, everyone you have ever known and loved, everyone you will ever know and love, and everyone you could ever know and love has lived out their lives here in this picture. Now, hmm, you may be saying by now, this doesn't include me. I was born in North America. I was born in California. And actually, in this case, you would be wrong, because this picture is of the world from the year 1500. And to their framework of reality, they cannot ever contemplate that you would exist in the world outside of theirs. And yet, Columbus sailed and eventually found your world. And not only did he sail there, they kept going back. They developed it. Um, they made it a reality to put you here today. So I'm going to tell this exact same story of human exploration, but it looks a little something like this. This is Earth. This is everyone you ever have known and loved, can ever know and love, and where they have lived out their lives. It's familiar, and the blackness outside is cold. It's infinite. It almost is. But despite these facts, I want to paint a picture of what life could be like in 500 years, reflecting the same amount of time it took Columbus to sail and find our new world to where we are today. And I want to argue that perhaps we're actually closer than 500 years to this reality, to being a multiplanetary species living in other worlds and on the moon. Because our Columbus has already sailed and set. Um, even if it's in the form of a robot landing on Mars and coming back is in the form of sending ones and zeros and images and scientific data. We may be closer to this reality than you think. So I want to introduce a concept of duality. Uh, this is exploration versus imploration. Now, imploration is a word I completely made up, but it defines a difference between exploration, which is physically taking yourself somewhere you've never been before. Um, this is if I traveled to Spain. I've never been to Spain, which is true. I'm jealous of you who have. And um, you, you, learn, you learn new things when you travel somewhere physically. Now, imploration kind of contains everything else. This is the uh, shrinking of our technologies. This is the iPhone in your pocket. This is things getting smaller and smaller, more interconnected, better uh, um, technology, all those kind of things. This is imploration, and it's, it's purposefully broad because it's to highlight the disparity between exploration, which we haven't really cultivated a ton of, and imploration, which we've maybe, I'm posing, uses a distraction to satisfy ourselves enough that we lack in exploration. And that this technology growth has gotten to a point where we have spiraled inside of ourselves to the point where we can destroy ourselves with our technologies and maybe by exploring we can gain some of that back. And for those of you who are maybe skeptics of exploring, going to space seemingly impractical, um, take in consideration that NASA, the soles in your shoes, um, they actually invented insoles. They actually invented water filters. So uh, obviously water filters are very important in third world countries and um, that's a technology that has helped us. So these are some companies that have helped make the internet useful to what we have today. Um, PayPal, Amazon, they connect us to goods, they connect us to media. These are our implorers by that definition that I had earlier. And now they are actually becoming our explorers. Um, so Elon Musk, who founded PayPal, became a billionaire, now owns SpaceX, which is a company that is trying to go to orbit and put humans in orbit. And they're completely privately funded. Uh, Jeff Bezos of Amazon.com is worth $23 billion, and he founded Blue Origin, which is another company that's trying to do the same. And then Richard Branson, Virgin Mobile, Virgin Galactic. So they are decentralizing our big governments, NASA, you know, Russia, China, that have done the space travel in the past. It's being decentralized, it's crowdsourcing to capitalist private companies, and this is the revolution. I particularly want to talk about planetary resources. Uh, it's just one example of a company that I'm particularly giddy about what they're doing. So what they're proposing to do um, is nothing less than epic. They are proposing asteroid mining. So sending robotic explorers out into our near solar system 
and harvesting resources from these asteroids. Um, there's precious metals, especially platinum is one that is a limiting factor of technology here on Earth. Uh, you hear a lot about you know, hydrogen fuel cells, maybe for cars, and that's like a cleaner way to burn energy and have cars, have transportation. And the limiting factor is platinum. It's very expensive now. So if we mine this, maybe we can enable a new energy economy here on Earth. This is a picture of progress, just an example of how things have been going in the space industry. So in 1981, this is a picture of the space shuttle main engine. Um, it doesn't really matter about the technical parts of it, but it's a representation. It costs $40 million. In 1998, that's another engine that uses the same fuels. It's of similar technology. That's not to discredit progress, but it also costs $40 million in 20 years almost. The, the, has the same cost and not a lot has changed. In 2013, that's a private rocket company, privately funded, the whole rocket cost $54 million. It's only $14 million more than one engine. And that rocket has nine engines in it. So this is the cost revolution that's happening is with regards to space. So if something's cheap, people are gonna do a lot of it. That's the idea. So these are some pictures of things that I've personally been able to work on uh, in my career so far at Maston Space Systems, Blue Origin, and here at USC Rocket Lab. So I was actually involved in pretty much all these pictures, uh, these projects. And the point of this is just to show there's a lot of work going on. Uh, I mentioned planetary resources, I mentioned some other companies. There are more of these companies being founded every year than even I can keep up with, and this is you know, my industry. But uh, what I want to paint a picture of also is not only uh, is getting things cheaper the goal, but it's also, and I'm just going to put a big fat reusability sign up here, because reusability is the key that will make that even better. So how many of you have ever ridden in a car or driven in a car? Probably, probably all of you, yeah, all of you. So. Um, yeah, so if you're driving in a car, if you're going down, you know, Pacific Coast Highway, let's say you're going to a beach, um, you get to the beach. Do you just kick the car into the ocean? No, of course you do not. Of course you do not. You save the car. Once you've done your journey, you save the car. And a rocket is a very expensive car. This thing costs, you know, ten to hundreds of millions of dollars. And that's not to say us rocket engineers are lazy. I mean, it's very hard to reuse a rocket. But that is what we're trying to do. That's what all these companies are trying to do, is foster reusability. And then... This is what really gets me, is just looking at stuff like this. I think it speaks very deeply to our sense of exploration. I think humans have an inbuilt desire to look at this and feel something. Um, it's universal. I think you could show this picture to anyone in any country at any time in humanity and they would see this and wonder what if you know, the universe is the answer. What is the question? Um, that's a quote by Leanne Linneman. And yeah, it's, it's spectacular. In fact, there's a story of this one scientist who went to an indigenous tribe in South America and they had never been contacted by external civilization. And he was talking to this tribe. It was hard to communicate. You know, they were looking at the cameras like it was very strange for them to see, you know, what are these people? It's almost aliens to us. But, you know, he's asking them about McDonald's, about Coke, about, you know, any cultural, any, any anchor that is commonality. But the one thing they asked once we could talk to them was, who are we sending to space these days? Because they knew. They knew we went to space. That's how big it was. And uh, not only this, but we've been given the gift of a consciousness that is, that is detailed and finely attuned enough that we can solve these problems you know, with our brain. The structure mimics each other. That, uh, and I, you know, I want to make the argument that if the you know, all of you ask questions about, you know, why don't we have better governments? Why don't we have better things on Earth? You know, what, what are we really doing? What, do, what can we improve? And so if you've questioned the universe inside of your own mind, um, you realize that making new connections and going outside of your own zone is how you foster progress. So I want to make the same argument. What this picture tells me about that is that 
we, in order to explore, should be going outside of our Earth, and that will foster the same growth as you have by looking at other intellectual quests. Um, and so I'm not up here to say, you know, this is all mine and none of yours. Uh, I really want to remove the barrier that I'm the rocket scientist and you guys just get to look at the pretty pictures and that's what it is. Um, I want to let you know that this new uh, presence in space, our ability to go in and, um, see, and create this new reality will create jobs for you guys, you know. I mean, we still need doctors, we still need government officials, we still need artists, we still need people to be involved in this. And I'm here to tell you that there will be in your lifetime jobs where you can be a doctor in space and you can learn about these things. If this picture speaks to you, you can be interested in it. And, um, you know, I'm still going to wake up in the morning and be, be in space and want my morning latte from Starbucks. And, uh, you know, they have a very good lead on marketing with that um, right now, but uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, I love this quote. A dream you dream alone is merely a dream. A dream we dream together is reality. Um, I think it really speaks to that, what I just said. And by the way, this picture includes Earth. That's actually a real picture. Um, it's colloquially called the four pixels. And it's called that because it really is four pixels. Um, this was taken by the probe Voyager as it left our solar system looking back at Earth. It was the last image we could get. And uh, I mean, it's amazing just to see ourselves there. That's everything. And, you know, I think the beautiful part about space exploration is that the story doesn't have to end there with a cold and lifeless picture taken by a robot. You know, I believe in a future where you all can possibly see this with your own eyes and you wouldn't even be alone, you know, cramped in a cold spaceship. You would be surrounded by other humans, you know, your friends, your loved ones, going off to another planet that we've possibly already seeded with new life. And this, to me, is a reality worth creating. And this is the euphoria of human exploration.